starting with the c set paper now this paper was very very interesting the first question was on direction problems now the question says the house faces towards the east and the person exits from the back side so let's understand this north south east and west the house is facing towards the east that means person is exiting from the west he walks straight for 25 meters then he takes a right and walks 50 meters so this is the direction now he takes a left and walks 25 meters so that is this in which direction he is from his house so this is the direction which is north west so north west is the right option here coming on to the next question two numbers are divisible by 2 and divisible by 3 if the number is divisible by 6 it has to be divisible by both 2 and 3 but there is no such rule for 4 so conclusion 1 is the only correct conclusion we can take any number we can take 6 itself so it would be divisible by both 2 and 3 we can take any multiple of 6 that is 12 so it would be divisible both by 2 and 3 so therefore you would have uh a that is only conclusion 1 would be correct the next question is a syllogism problem if you have any doubts you can go back to our lectures on syllogism that we have covered now we have cats dogs and black the first statement says all cats are dogs so all cats are dog that means there is no cat outside this region the next statement says all cats are black so this is the shaded region that would go now based on this the first conclusion says all dogs are black that is incorrect dog can be here here or here so any of the three locations i cannot comment so first conclusion is incorrect the second conclusion says some dogs are not black again i cannot say because dog can be here here or here it it is not defined so both the conclusion does not follow so neither of the conclusion would follow the next question is how many odd numbers are followed by the odd numbers in the above sequence so let's first mark the odd numbers here so we have the odd numbers here now from these odd numbers what we would try to do is we would see which of these follow so from the lower series there is no one none of the number that would follow here you would have one number to these number then 4 and then 5 and 6 so six numbers follow so you would have six as the right option here the next question is a is 16th from the left so this is right this is left so i'll start from the left a is 16th from the left and then g is 11th from a Further eleven from A is D, so I add eleven more. That is D, which is twenty seventh position. So G's position from the left is twenty seven. Now from the right, I say V is eighteenth position. So V's position is eighteen. G is third from the V towards the right. So from this towards the right, it is third. That means fifteenth here. Okay, that means. I add twenty seven and fifteen, so twenty seven plus fifteen gives me forty two. But here the position of G is being taken twice, so I just take one of those. I remove one, so forty one would be the right answer here. The next question is C is younger than D. C is younger than D, but older than A and B. and then i say d is the oldest okay fine that we can directly prove so no requirement for this and then the question says you have to find out youngest now if it was oldest s1 again s1 alone would have been sufficient since it's asking youngest i need to understand a is older than b so a greater than b that is required to prove that who would be the youngest one so s1 as well as s3 are required so one uh, s1 and s3 are required to answer this question if it is asked about youngest if it was oldest only s1 would suffice the next question is how many integers are there between 1 and 100 which have 4 as a digit and are not divisible but are not divisible by 4 so i simply write 4 14 24 34 then i write all the numbers uh, from 41 40 onwards so 44 45 46 47 48 uh, 49 
then you would have uh, 54, 64, 74, 84 and 94. Now out of these I'll first mark which are divisible by 4. So 84 is divisible, 4 is divisible, then you have 24 is divisible, I have 40 as divisible, 44 would be divisible, then 48 again would be divisible and then you would have 64 would be divisible. So you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 that are divisible but it says which are not divisible by 4. So the remaining ones are not divisible 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So 12 numbers are there which are not divisible by 4. The next question is an interesting question. We have two metallic cubes P and Q. Now the side of Q is two times that of P. So Q side is two times that of P. Now volume I just take a cube of this so it becomes Q cube is equal to 8P cube. That means Y is equal to 8X. Now mass would, is directly given so mass of Q is twice of P. So U is equal to M by X, U is equal to M by X and in the second case V is equal to N by Y. Now this N by Y how would I prove? So Y is how much? Y is 8X. So this is 8X and this is 2. So it is 1 by 4. Now it would be V is equal to 1 by 4 and then it's U so you would have 4V, U is equal to 4V would be the right option. So it's 4 times the V, okay. So as simple as that for the first case, this is the volume ratio that we are trying to find. The mass ratio is already given and then you are trying to do M by X. So M by X for the first case, let it remain as such. For the second case, N by Y, N is the mass. So mass here is 2P, so 2P by 8x would be taken into consideration so it would be 1 by 4 so 4 taken here that means 4v is equal to u so you would have a as the right option the next question is the average age of a teacher and three students so teacher plus three students average age that is total four people is 20 that means t plus 3s is equal to 80. Then the difference between the age of the teacher and the student is 20. So teacher minus the student is 20. I multiply this by 3. So it becomes 3 teacher minus 3 student is equal to 60. Okay. Then I solve this. So 4 teacher is equal to 140. So teacher is equal to 140 by 4 which is 35. So the age of the teacher would be 35. So 35 would be the right option here. The next question is consider if I buy the car for 100 and I uh, uh, incur a loss of 20% so it's 80. Now for 80 the price is 3 lakhs. So for 1 it would be 3 lakhs divided by 80 multiplied by 100. So simply solve this and you would have the right answer here. Okay so it would be 3 lakhs into 4 by 3. The next question Okay, so sorry, it would be uh, 5 by 4, okay, not 4 by 3, 5 by 4, okay. So 3 into 5 by 4 would be the solution. Uh, the next question, the next few questions are based on passage. Now the first question here talks about foreign direct investment. Now the first statement itself says that foreign direct, uh, foreign private investment is more volatile because you would have significant avenues for investment that is there. And there are two things that are mentioned. The negative things are that there would be unstable employment and accentuation of income with regional inequalities. However, the positive end is that there would be inflow of technology and diffusion which would improve the state of existing human and uh, physical capital in India. Now the question asks about assumption but it, it is actually talking about what can be uh, explained or what can be concluded from this section. So the first conclusion that that is very very obvious is relying on foreign investment in long run is not an economically sound decision. Also the policies must be undertaken to strengthen the domestic private investment and since it talks about the physical and human capital that means investment in public and he public health and education should be taken into consideration. So 1, 3 and 5 would be the right options. 
The next is this talks about the changes in the rainwater system and climate change is affecting the weather conditions creating water shortages. So what is a best option for a country like India? The best option for a country like India would be interlinking which we have been working around for long and creating a network of dams for proper distribution of water. Now understand this carefully distribution of water should be regulated by the union government among various regions so we are not talking about regulation as of now so both of these options get incorrect here the idea is to basically have water throughout the season and any unutilized water should not be there so what is the best mechanism for removing the water issues the water crisis and solving the problem so one and two would be the right option option here the next question talks about the delivery of water systems uh, of the water supply in the cities. Now it says that those cities which are rich can meet the cost, those who are not cannot meet the cost at their own. But the cost is not just the uh, water supply but it is also for the sewage treatment. So from this statement uh, we understand that uh, let's first talk about the first question. So we have two questions here. The first question says which is the most crucial message from the passage. So the crucial message is the urban local bodies must recover the cost through the charges and only then there could be a sustainable delivery mechanism of water in the cities that could be seen. The next question talks about rich cities can ensure sustainable delivery. Even the poor can have a sustainable delivery. So this is not the correct option. The second says sustainable delivery means uh, in the cities means much more than supplying water that's true because it talks about sewage treatment as well as what we said so two only is the right option here the next question is we are talking about agriculture and we initially said that we have small and marginal farm holdings china and vietnam are doing good but in india also we witnessed rural transformation because private players came into agriculture as a result the rural poverty significantly declined so that is the essence of this passage. Now based on this which of the assumptions could be made we can assume that a good price initiative can trigger investment as it has been seen with the case of private investments and this also talks about high value agricultural products like livestock and horticulture. So two and three would be the right option. We are not talking about higher prices in the global market nor we are saying that in India this cannot be possible because we have small and marginal farmers. So one and four are the incorrect options here. The next is which best reflects the critical message from the uh, passage. So the best message is to create uh, a kind of inclusive agricultural growth and that's the sole objective that we are focusing about because we are talking to move, talking about moving the people out of the ag uh, the rural poverty and that is possible when you have better agricultural prospects so inclusive agricultural growth can help to reduce the poverty. So D is the right option. Now these are again some of the data sufficiency questions. These are commonly asked for your GMAT examination but we have seen a lot of data sufficiency questions this time but most of those were very very simple. Now here it says P is sorry R is greater than P and Q and S is not the largest. Now the question says which of the following is the largest so obviously R is the largest S is not the largest and R is greater than P and Q only 4 are present so R becomes the largest but to explain this I need to have both the statements in order to solve this so S1 and S2 together are sufficient to answer the question is there are two numbers the numbers are 7 and 3 now the sum of them is 10 the product is 21 so the two numbers are 7 and 3 and therefore I can solve this by saying that both the statements are required to solve this otherwise I could put up any combination I could put 6 and 4 I can put 5 and 5 but their products would not match so to find out exactly the two numbers whose sum is 10 and product is 21 I need to have both the statements that are there and therefore C is the right option. So this was the first set for your C set paper 2. We would be covering the remaining questions in the upcoming lecture. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.